Mangroves are a coastal fringe forest. They're kind of unique because they stand between two worlds, between the ocean and the land. Mangroves are found in the tropical and the subtropical areas of the world. Local people depend on mangroves for fuel wood, for the fish they can gather from there, the clams and the crustaceans and shrimp. They use it for medicines, herbs, teas. They use it for uh, making their boats and building their homes and so on and so on. There's just an immense variety of uses of the mangrove. Mangroves live on the edge of the sea. They provide a range of habitats that go from hard land to fresh water, to brackish water, to salt water. Mangroves are specially adapted to living where other plants cannot live. They are one of the few groups of flowering plants that is able to live in salt water. There are several different strategies that mangroves use for getting rid of salt. They can put it out through the leaves, and the leaves are salty. They, hmm, very salty. They can get rid of it through the bark, and uh, they also stick roots up into the air, and they suck oxygen out of the air and out of the water and get rid of excess salt, and then it's floated away on the outgoing tide. Many things live in mangrove forests. The leaves and the bark fall into the water, settle there, and are eaten by crabs and clams and a number of other kinds of shellfish that eat debris. Until recently, people did not realize how important mangroves were. They cut them for charcoal, they cut them to make prawn farms. They cut them to get them out of the way for farming. จะไม่จะไม่สาวๆตอนนั้นมีมากมีกุ้งอ้อยปูแล้วก็ปลารวมอยู่ตรงนั้นBefore the mangrove was destroyed, there were fishing villages there, basically living a simple life of fishing and harvesting from the mangrove forest sustainably. Once the mangroves are destroyed or industries move in, whether it's a tourism industry or a shrimp farm, the fishing goes downhill. Without the mangroves, it's 75 percent of the fish species, the fisheries that people depend upon in these areas are wiped out. You know, 75 percent of those fish depend on mangroves for part of their existence. And the mangroves also interact with the seagrasses and the coral reef. 
And so when you lose the mangroves, you're losing these other ecosystems which are codependent upon them. Yeah, the mangroves are disappearing at a very alarming rate, probably equal to the rate of the inland rainforest. But originally, when the shrimp aquaculture industry formed and started expanding in the early 80s, the mangrove areas were basically looked at as wastelands. Wastelands meaning nothing was there, it was just a swampy, smelly area, mosquitoes and muddy. So they looked at that land as worthless. And all the mangrove forests along the coast were knocked down, were cleared to put these shrimp farms in. So when you establish a shrimp farm in the mangrove area, it's a, it's a relatively flat area, close to the ocean, so it's easy to pump water in and out in the mines of the, of the shrimp farmers. The mangroves are ideally located because they're close to the sea. But in reality, the mangroves are not ideal because mangrove soils are acid sulfate soils. Once the soil is exposed to the sun and air, it turns to an acidy sulfite. What they leave behind is this desert. What was once a very fulfilling, rich ecosystem very productive, biodiverse ecosystem is torn apart. For an industry that produces shrimp for export to wealthy nations. The Mangrove Action Project got involved at that time and we helped spread the word, put pressure on shrimp farmers not to come into the mangrove areas. It had been actually after the shrimp farms on the East Coast were set up and started failing. They warned the fishermen, please don't let this happen here, because where you are in the Ottoman Sea area of Trang, there hasn't been the intrusion yet, but they're coming your way. มาเข้ามาอยู่ในหมู่บ้านครั้งแรกเนาะเค้าเข้ามาในหมู่บ้านนี้ต้องการให้พวกเราทํามันอันรักนี่แต่เราไม่เข้าใจว่าหาอันร
คือการเลี้ยงกุ้งอย่างนี้ก็ใช้ทุนเยอะหนึ่งถ้าเราถ้าเราพูดกันจริงๆเนาะพูดกันตรงไปตรงมาเลยอีกส่วนหนึ่งทําลายป่าชายเลนแล้วก็ถ้าไปไปทําลายป่าบุกทํานากุ้งและต่อไปดินจะเค็มดินจะเค็มเราจะปรับปรุงยังไงถ้าเป็นบ่อกุ้งร้างแต่พอมาทําตรงนี้เราอนุรักษ์ตรงนี้ไว้ตอนนี้ปลาก็มีเยอะขึ้นกุ้งก็มีปูก็มีไอ้ได้กินได้ใช้ในหมู่บ้านชาวบ้านอยู่กับพื้นที่เขารู้นะเขารู้ว่าเออเราทำลายตรงนี้สัตว์ที่อยู่ในป่ากงกลางหลายๆชนิดสัตว์นี้มันต้องเคลื่อนเลยมันต้องมันต้องสูญพันธุ์